In today's video we're going to be brutally testing the Mycol motorcycle phone mount. Coming in at $20 on Amazon, you're about to see why this is the best phone mount I've tested so far, as usually they just instantly fall apart. We'll be bashing it on three different bikes and one off-road scooter to see how well it handles excessive vibrations and hard smacks. We'll get into some details about why I really like this mount, but first I'm going to let the video speak for itself. My apologies if some of the shaky footage was a bit jarring. GoPro's Hyper Smooth is great, but it has its limitations. I don't normally go out of my way to beat the crap out of the bikes and scooter, but in this situation I figured a good test would be worth it. Now LaMichael did send us this phone mount for testing, but as always, that does not affect our review and opinions about it. Although this phone mount is advertised mainly for motorcycles, in my own opinion I think it'll see more brutal situations on bikes. My main reasoning for this is motorcycles, dual sports, and even dirt bikes have cushy front suspension that can soak up most of the jarring forces that a phone mount would be affected by. On bikes, particularly the cheap bikes that we run, they're subject to a lot more vibration and smacking motions. Unexpected potholes and rough patches in your daily commute are usually what tend to knock these things loose. Of course, if all you ride is smooth city streets, the design of this mount might be a little bulky and overkill for your situation, but at a very fair price of $20, I can't see any reason not to use this. As a little extra bulk that reinforces a relatively cheap piece of hardware that's meant to protect an incredibly expensive piece of hardware, it's something I can't pass up. The phone mount comes packed minimally in a simple, clean design box. They didn't waste any money on flashy designs or logos. As soon as I opened the box, I immediately had a good feeling about this one. The design is clean and well put together. Although the mount is of course plastic, rubber, and a few metal bits, it feels solid in the hand. And I was really happy to see that the interface between the handlebar clamp and the phone mount itself uses absolutely no screws or hardware, which is where I found to be the failure point on a lot of mounts for bike lights and phones. 
Now on to the test. We have three of them. We'll give you the highlights. Our first test is for excessive vibration. We're going to put it on our four stroke. This build shakes more than a frozen wet cat, so this should be interesting. We've got a solid fork on gravel roads that are rutted up from rain. I've got a flagship phone. This is LG's Thin Q. It's got a big bulky case on it to protect it and it still fits in here no problem. Uh, the one-handed install and installation is really nice. Uh, I didn't think much about that when they were sending it over as one of the features, but it actually seems to work out great. Handlebar placement for this mount is pretty important to keeping it from migrating under vibration. On this build I'm lucky as there's a nice flat portion of real estate on the bar for me to get a solid mount. If you have tapered bars it might be a little trickier but we'll get into that more once we encounter them on one of the other bikes. This was approximately a 20 mile round trip ride on gravel roads and I didn't once notice the clamp on the handlebars or the ball joint itself migrate under vibration. Essentially, it stayed right where I put it from start to finish. That's not to say that the mount locks in and becomes an immovable object. If you slam into something hard enough, I'm sure it'll move. But at that point, you're better off checking for damage on your front wheel and forks. For our next test, we're going to see how well it handles hard smacks. We're going to put it on one of our trail bikes and ride through some paths where I don't normally go. Pushing it a little harder than usual. Our speeds won't be excessive, but the riding conditions will be. The clamp on this mount has no problems adjusting to thin and thick handlebars. It looks like it'll fit pretty much anything you can put on a bike. For our trail bike build, we'll be using the thick inner portion of the bars to mount this foam.
Although I can't think of much of a good reason why someone would want to mount their phone to a handlebar set in these kind of riding conditions, it's nice to know it holds on, and once again, did not budge. So if you find yourself in a situation where you want to know exactly how fast you're rocketing yourself to an early grave, this handlebar clamp will have no problem letting you know. I'll call this next ride our catapult test. We're going to mount it to an off-road scooter which has vastly different riding dynamics. This handles bumps in the road as more of a flinging motion that carries a lot more momentum. The handlebars will rock forward and back as opposed to up and down whenever you encounter rough terrain. Varla has been putting in some work with this Eagle One at 325 miles. Nothing's broken on it, still got lots of power, still got lots of range. I mean, she's been in the muck. <laughs> Got a little stick went sideways on me. What you guys think? Mount that sucker right there. <laughs> I think I can make it through this. Another thing I really like about this Eagle One is I can scout stuff for my Swin Taff, the motorized trail bike. That bike is plenty capable as far as motorized bikes go, but it has its limits. Whew. And that might be one of them right there. 
Oh, I'm sorry, Barla. I did not mean to do this, but we're halfway through, so we're committed. <laughs> You see, like those rocks right there, I, I wouldn't want to come up on on the tab. Needless to say, I'm impressed with LaMichael's phone mount. Now, personally myself, I rarely ever use phone mounts, mainly because the few that I've tried have fallen apart. But now, honestly, I've just reached the point where I've scouted out so many of the roads around where I live that I never find myself in a situation where I need to have a phone mounted to the handlebars, sometimes for a speedometer, but that's just about it. Admittedly, I'm looking forward to really giving this a nice long-range test when we take one of the bikes on an adventure trip here pretty soon. We've got great weather, so I'm looking forward to that. This video does not do justice to exactly what this thing was subjected to. I can't portray what was felt through the handlebars in visual form. I can only hope that you'll take my word for it, as I trust this mount not to drop the phone. A few key features that I'd like to point out about this mount. One, it looks like it's going to fit pretty much anything you have, as my phone has a bulky case on it to give it even more protection against drops, and it had no problem fitting into this mount. But the rubber pads on each corner of the mount itself are removable, so if you have an excessively large phone with a bulky case, it should still fit. The ball joint has rubber inside the phone clamp itself to help it hold on even better and prevent it from migrating under excessive use. The ratcheting clamp combined with fine adjustments with the screw means that you can quickly swap this over from bike to bike. Or in my situation, effortlessly take it off the bike and use it as a convenient phone mount when you want to kill some time away from home. The phone can easily be taken out of the mount with one hand. And there's even a locking mechanism on the back of the clamp to ensure that the phone can't bounce out of the mount under hard riding conditions. If you guys have been watching my channel for long enough, you know it's pretty rare for me to have a review on something with absolutely no negative points. This might actually be the first. But without our time machine to see how it's going to hold up in the long run, at least for the moment, I have absolutely nothing negative to say about this phone mount. It's priced right, it's built solid, and it just doesn't move. So I hope you guys got some useful information out of today's video, or at the very least, were mildly entertained. And until next time, ride safe.